Good evening. This is Dwayne Lowry for the DPP Green Desk on Sunday, September 9th. It's about 3.40 in the afternoon. Uh, the outlook tonight, um, I guess this week, is going to be largely dominated by Wednesday's USDA reports. Uh, the market's been slipping and sliding and acting weakly going into that report for the last several days. I think that's been contrary to what people have been generally expecting just based on the smaller than, uh, you know, to continually declining crop size and you know, bullish attitudes and uh, nobody willing to sell it per se, but yet the market has kind of underperformed the last several days. <clears throat> so there's already been a surprise in terms of preparing for uh, Wednesday's report, but I, I think that we probably have a situation that maybe we start weaker tonight based on uh, a, a soft uh, late session on Friday, but uh, I don't think uh, you're going to generate a lot of new selling interest. The question is, are you going to generate additional liquidation pressures uh, in front of Wednesday's report. Maybe I think that's an overriding um, vulnerable theme that we have out there, but I don't think the short-term charts and conditions tech will generate new tech selling all of a sudden here Sunday night and, and um, tomorrow in front of this report. So I'm, I'm thinking we're going to see relatively uh, stable start. Uh, maybe trade on both sides will probably be uh, supported. I think it's reasonable to believe we could get some short covering activity going into Wednesday's reports. Problem is, let's say we get um, a report in line with expectations and it's a little bit smaller than last month's crop. Um, we know it's a, a very bullish raw set of numbers and data, but the market has known that for several weeks and price action in the, during the last month and in the market's biggest focus, corn has certainly been underperforming expectations. Uh, it threatens to, to uh, suffer from liquidation pressures, and that's been going on here for several weeks, and I don't think that's really changed. Um, I think it's also uh, worth pointing out that while it may not be an influence on tonight's trade or any day-to-day -day influence, um, I think moving forward from here into the end of the year, we're going to have to constantly be dealing with the outside markets and uh, global economic uh, expectations. Um, the U.S. Congress returns uh, after about a five-week recess uh, tomorrow, and they have a three-week uh, uh, session here. I think that's going to return focus to the gridlock we have in Washington, the inability to compromise, and we got some very key pieces of legislation to contend with by the end of the year that has uh, you know, potential for significant impact on the U.S. and global economy. Uh, what happens with the Bush tax cuts? Uh, whether they extend them, they allow them to expire, uh, what happens with the automated uh, spending cuts that were agreed on previously, if they allow those two things to both go through its natural course here, that's going to put pressure on the economy with reduced economic activity, not something that anybody would really wants to see, but in the same token, um, that's what's in place unless Congress can agree on a different agenda. And right now, compromise and agreement has been a very elusive thing. Maybe the election will have some impact, and I think that's probably what the, the uh, Congress is going to do. They're going to punt on all these items uh, until after the election and, and deal with it as they must. But I think all of this points to uh, concerning economic issues. Weekend economic data showed China's manufacturing sector um, still slowing down. Uh, no clear uh, indication of any imminent new uh, stimulus uh, agenda from China. Uh, Europe's <coughs> uh, economic data over the weekend um, still points to uh, problems with growth. Um, French president um, came out with uh, a, a gloomy economic outlook. Uh, Greece's coalition government's been unable to agree to a spending package cut, spending cut package, uh, which if they uh, continue to be unable to reach agreement, that threatens out threatens additional uh, bailout funding. So I think the outside markets here look uh, susceptible. I think the stock market is uh, hovering up here in anticipation of new Fed activity and new economic stimulus activity, uh, probably setting themselves up for disappointment as the uh, Fed, uh, um, as, as people look to the Fed here uh, this week for some new action. It's probably not likely. Uh, they're not likely to probably do anything until after the election either, and they're going to continue to punt the ball and, and not want to get involved in just in front of the election. So I think the, the outside markets and poor economic global outlook is going to be a, something that we're going to have to contend with, and it seems likely that uh, that could come into a sharper focus with Congress returning to session here this week. 
So I see some negative influences, but I'm not sure they're negative enough uh, to keep selling pressure on in front of this USDA report. Yield reports should begin, become more numerous uh, this week and next as uh, weather looks to uh, allow uh, harvest to uh, expand. And uh, I think that in the case of corn, while it's obvious that we have a, a very small crop and a huge amount of rationing to accomplish here, um, I think there's a lot of people that are a little bit surprised that we are getting some better than expected yield reports in corn. And I think that causes some to ponder the idea that, hey, maybe we've already factored in the worst case scenario. And for the time being, that might lead to liquidation in the futures market to coincide with harvest activity. And it may very well be that you need current prices or even higher prices to actually ration the usage when you get into the marketing season. But for right now, the speculative community is already loaded up. Price action is not performing as well as they expected. Market has been in the stagnation. And if we get Wednesday's reports and there's not something significantly new and bullish, I think you're still dealing with an environment here that is very susceptible to liquidation pressures. If that is true, you're talking about downside risk and from current levels of at least 50 cents in corn, at least a dollar in beans, and possibly twice those levels. So um, I think that, you know, as far as tonight is concerned, I think we can trade on both sides, but I'm more inclined to think the market finds a way to, to experience a little firmness um, tonight through Tuesday and prepare for in preparation for the USDA report. For the DPP Grain Desk, it's been Dwayne Lowry. Thank you.